All right, let me just briefly introduce the concept of thinking about mean-free path as just a characteristic number that's part of a probability distribution. Um, so, you know, what I want, to, want you to keep in mind is that just because a particle has traveled a distance that's the mean free path doesn't necessarily mean that it will scatter. Some particles will scatter sooner and some particles will scatter later than that. Um, and there is a, an important um, finite probability um, that, you know, it will not be close to the average. And in fact, if you go on to do some more advanced study, you'll see that um, a lot of times this is somewhat associated with a phenomena called levy flight. Um, it's sort of a modern topic in heat transfer, um, not one that we'll talk about in this class, but you sort of have to understand the, the concept of distributions in order to get that concept. So let me just briefly introduce this. So. Um, let me think about what we've discussed, this mean free path, as really representative of like how far or the pro okay, so what is the probability that a particle will scatter if it goes a particular distance, right? Well, if the distance is very small, the probability of scattering will be basically the distance that the particle travels divided by a characteristic distance L. And yes, it will turn out that the characteristic distance L that I'm introducing right now is the mean free path. Um, but that's not necessarily um, known a priori, but it turns out to be true. Um, so, so, if, so, this, so if the distance is small, then the probability that a particle will scatter over a distance delta x is just delta x divided by this characteristic distance. Um, let me, so this is the, so P is, probability of scattering between x and x plus delta x. Okay, so if that's true, then the probability of not scattering you'll see that this is useful. This is a useful concept in a second. So the probability of not scattering is just one minus that. So this is the probability that a particle did not scatter over that time period. Um, so of not scattering And then what I really want to know, okay, so is what's the probability that I went from, so, so in this case, x was a small, delta x was meant to be a small number. Um, you know, what if it's a larger number, right? So what's the probability of, so now, so what's the probability of not scattering from zero to um, delta x. From x equals zero to um, x plus delta x. So I'll write that as the probability of not scattering all the way up to x plus delta x. So I guess I would write this as the probability of not scattering over the distance delta x. Well, that's just the probability. So this, this would be the probability of not scattering up to point x times the probability of not scattering between x and delta x. Easy enough. Um, but I can use calculus to sort of rearrange this, right? So, um, so in, in, in one sense, like what I can do is I can sort of realize that what I'm setting up here is the definition of, uh, so let me write this as, so I'll, I'll rearrange this as not P um, at X plus delta X minus not P at X divided by delta X 
So if I if I if I basically just rearrange this thing over here, I'll see that that is equal to minus p minus not p over l. Or in other words, the I can so if I use this and realize that this is the definition of the derivative of not p, then that implies that there's a distribution that goes like, you know, I can solve this for p. It's just a first, so this thing is a first order differential equation for not p, the probability of not scattering up to point, up to a distance x. Um, that goes as some constant times e to the minus x over l and I can because it's a probability distribution I can actually figure out what um, c is because um, the probability of not scattering up until um, or sorry the probability of not scattering at time equals zero is exactly one um, and so that means that you know when x is zero this thing had better be equal to one um, and that tells me that c is actually equal to one so that implies that this is actually the probability of not scattering up until a distance x um, or in other words um, the probability of not scattering follows a Poisson distribution. And just as a reminder, so this is the probability of not scattering over distance x. Okay, now let's let me just show you that the average distance that something you know travels before it scatters. So the what is what is the average distance that something scatters uh, travels before it scatters? Um, so that would be if I just take the average. of this distribution and that of course turns out to be L. So yes, the L is the average distance over which a particle does not scatter. But of course, you know, that's basically a function that, oh, a little extreme there. You know, that's basically a function that looks like this. So there is always some finite tail over here. You know, the average, the average might, you know, be a distance L, but, you know, there is some finite probability that a particle can travel you know, quite a long way before it actually does scatter. So there is some probability for that. So this is the probability of not scattering. Okay, so, um, you know, using that Poisson distribution that's in the box up there, you could potentially calculate, you know, the, dis the probability of something traveling much longer distance um, and, you know, do so at your own, um, you know, as needed.